dialed in to Box and Brews, you might hear something you can use. Like tips on your cash or tips on the suds. You're going to want to use the smarts of these studs. Because they know the brews. And they know the box. And they know they can't help the stubborn fucks. So listen up, because shit's not funny. And save yourself some beer, beer money. money. Box and, and Brews. Box and Brews. And, and Brews. Box and Brews. Welcome back to Bucks and Brews. Uh, Nick? David? Last week was interesting. Was like, last week was a... I, you know what? I loved it. I loved it, and it's funny because I was telling people, I was like, man, I finally had an episode where I got to open up and get so passionate about business and, like, driving somebody to fucking be successful. And it was like... Yeah, but the business you got excited about. Doesn't matter, but, like, the goals and the reality of life. I just, like, it brought me to, like, who, like, I loved, I loved teaching that stuff right like your goals are everything again i uh, i hope they have all the success yeah I, uh, I am not a believer in in that multi-level marketing yeah none yeah. of it none of it so um you know guys thanks so much for joining us today uh really excited to have a, a returning guest again um if you wouldn't mind like subscribe share tell your friends tell your family uh we appreciate all the love and support from you guys uh, today, David, because I don't care what you're drinking yet, uh, I'm drinking a, a Perrin Brewing Company Dream Seeker Raspberry Blonde. I have a couple of those left, which tells you how good they were because I didn't drink them all yet. Last right. Time. Not not your favorite <laughs> Perrin. Yeah. Um, I'm starting with a Forbidden Fruit Watermelon Hard Cider. Um, yeah, you don't like watermelon. I don't. This isn't great. This is more whiny than it is cidery. I do like wine. You might like this. You want to try? I do. Um, it's not bad. It's not one of my favorites. I also have uh, Peach Party from Blake's. and it still sucks. <laughs> Congrats, I don't like watermelon still. And, uh, uh, caramel, salted caramel porter from uh, Pigeon Hill. That's better than this, though, which sounds really weird. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. So, as you said, we have one of our all-time favorite guests on, Jesse De Silva, the Millennial Money Witch. Jesse, what you drinking? Because we know I'm she's drinking. drinking. Oh, I've got Swamp Head Wild Night, which is their honey cream ale. Nice. Like perfect delicious. drink for summer. Yeah, it's so good. It's not my favorite cream ale. My favorite cream ale comes from Bold City Brewery um, out in Jacksonville. They have a killer whale ale. It's so good. I'll have to mm. send it to you guys. But um, this one is a really close second. And I just relocated here. So this is this game. This is um, a Gainesville, Florida brewery. And now I'm I'm back here. So this is local beer. Super Congrats local. on the move. Thank you. Yeah. It, was, it just happened like the weekend before last. Is, so. is is that art behind you? I mean, just still not hung up. Is that oh, what that is? Yeah, it's I'm gonna not. Call, it's not I'm gonna call up. you out on your stuff. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. All my stuff is still like uh, stacked against the wall in my office. But yeah. yeah, the art's not up, but the furniture is unpacked. So yeah. we've lived in our house for eight years, and when people come over and it's a mess, I'm just like, yeah, we still haven't finished unpacking, and we're still going with it. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I'm still saying that I bought my house in 2007. So <laughs> that sounds like 20 just, years there. That sounds like a great life hack. I'm just going to adopt I'm, that. You're just welcome for that, folks. Um, you know, I think I know why Jesse's one of our favorite guests. She never disappoints with with having a a, a good time. A, well, not not only that, but a good beer. Yeah. I mean, she always drinks something yeah. we haven't heard of. Yeah. So you probably you probably are our best drinking drinking guest. guest. Yeah. Absolutely um except for, except for the guy from uh Pennsylvania. oh my god but that's for another day no i want to get into that yeah. jesse we did an episode that we couldn't publish we've never not published an episode in our life <laughs> but this guy was so hammered by the time he got on no. uh, he was talking about coke and strippers and looking oh for looking god. for a girlfriend yep like, he he literally finished a fifth upside it was have you ever seen catfish coolie no oh so he's a he's a anyway so the, he chugs like a full fist but he used to he stopped drinking but oh yeah so this guy got an upside down bottle and i was like dude like you we are bucks and brews we like to enjoy some beverages and talk some money like you are who he was Wait. gone and he got on he's like hey sorry i was nervous i started pre-gaming and i was like what at like 9 a.m bud like, <laughs> shit. we didn't feel it was a good representation so we decided yeah. not to publish that one yeah, it's a, you know, and we reached out to him like 20 times. Yeah. Because, you know, we talked to each other. We're like, hey, it's really not like we actually see it. It's that bad. Yeah. We're like, hey, man, if you want to do it again, like 
it, we just want to let you hear it first and yeah. you tell us if that's what you want to put out we, we've never offered this to anybody ever in our life it's not who we are as people um and he just didn't respond yeah. to anything he, he totally ghosted us he offered us 50 of his games like yeah. he's just going to give them all it was free and yeah it was but uh so we we at bucks and bruce have officially not published one one episode one episode yeah wow so uh you might want to reach out to him and see if he's looking for a job or something <laughs> he, he has to be looking for a job because the last time we knew he was going to fight some guy yeah it was great i loved that guy <laughs> we could have been best friends. i don't think you could have <laughs> I don't think anybody can be that guy's friend. <laughs> Just for a little bit. So well, he sounds like he'd make a great client. Yeah, <laughs> he would definitely make a great client if you could ever get him sober. Let me uh let me see here. I'm gonna all right. So you last week had the privilege of speaking at the Lavender Law, the annual conference for the National LGBTQ plus Bar Association. How did that go? Oh, it was so awesome. I mean, like, I've got an affinity for sequins. And so, like, they did not disappoint. They loved it. I wore a hot pink tiger stripe suit. I was super fucking yeah. jealous of that suit. Like, I looked at it and I was like, what the fuck? They don't make this in my size. <laughs> it's amazing. And so, it and it was great. I was speaking to, like, 200 or so law students who were there, like, looking for, most of them were looking for, like, their internship for next summer, right? Okay. And so they have a huge job fair. So I was talking to them about mindset, about networking and like all the tips and tricks that I have on that. And it was just like such a blast. It was my favorite audience I've had so far. It was just like so much fun, like people participating, shouting things out when I was, you know, when I asked them to, yep. and then asking questions. Yeah. It was just like laughing at all my jokes. It was fantastic. I had the best time. And then like in exchange, I got to like hang out for the rest of the conference. And on the last day during the luncheon, there was a drag show. I was like, this is the best conference I've ever been to in my life. Like, yeah. like, I don't care that I'm not practicing law anymore. I'm going to try and come back every year. <laughs> like, right. Awesome. I, uh, I've I've done a few drag shows or you know been to them. I was gonna say you've done them, but I've I've never dressed in drag, but I've always been a participant because they find it funny that the one straight guy in the room is there. And so, yeah, always. Um, I, you know, I I am the problem, right? So like I, me, I don't know how to. So I just start stripping, right? And then of course like, everybody's like, that's not what you do. But I'm like, ah, oh, you know, hey. Put the twenty dollars wherever you find it. So, oh yeah, you I, would start stripping. I did like well, it was save a horse, ride a cowboy was my song. I had to dance to. So there was just me. Well, what else do you get to? Yeah, I mean, that's what I said, right? And then so everybody's like, "Oh man, you lost because it was round of." And I was like, "No, all right, I officially won because the guy I was going against was like, no, I'm not going to dance.' I like, no, no. Nick went for like he's like, nope. And so he got off stage, and they're like, "Well, we need another volunteer or whatever." A guy who's already done drag and dance before then becomes my competition. And of course, then he, he dances to like Barbie girl or whatever. And so then beats me. But I'm like, no, I, I officially didn't even have the person compete because I won instantly. They quit. Like, that's how good I was. I made a professional have to come on stage to compete against me. OK, but I did raise more money than him. So uh, I think that that's the win. I see no lies in this. Right. Um, there's actual video that hasn't ever gone public. Um, they tease me about it, like, and how they're going to post it, but they all know respectfully that they won't post that because what's held in a 250 person room stays in a 250 person room. Is that to cut off 250 people? Uh, you know, I don't know, but it's a, um, that's just life. So you're, you're teaching these young people how to, how to put themselves out there for their, uh, sorry, what'd you call it? Um, how to find their, their job yeah, or their internship. Mm -hmm. And um, now did you were on a panel or was it by you, you by yourself? Oh, it was me. I was the whole panel. Just so the whole thing. I, yeah. <clears throat> I was so excited. I was like, yeah, this is perfect. I love an audience. Give me a mic. I'm ready to go. So oh, yeah, it was super fun. Good. And then um, are you hoping to get clients out of that? Yeah, well, I've gotten um, a couple people are interested in bringing me like bringing me in a, to speak. So I've got one law firm who's thinking about bringing me in to speak to their summer associates. And then I've got 
um, somebody who's the head of a chamber of commerce up in Maryland wants to bring me in for um, a speaking engagement and a book signing. So I'm excited. Yeah. So that's really like, you know, and I'm just happy to help. Like I love going to, I love speaking. So I love going to events and then the more you go to, the more people want you to come speak. So, you know, yeah. it's just giving them tons of opportunities to like, see you, see you in action. That's what I give the people what they want. That's what I always say. That's, oh, yeah. Um, and so you're, you you've moved to a new place. Has your business slowed because of the move or have you just kept right on track? Oh, I've kept on track. Cause most of my business is like online, like how I run things. Like it's, not usually stuff I'm doing in person with people, except for some of the speaking engagements I'm in person. So, you know, it's just a new airport to fly out of really. So, you know, I've got that. And then plus I've, I'm also in crunch time for my book, which comes out on September 19th. Um, so that's Ooh. like right around the corner. Yeah. So I'm like in the process of getting things done. I'm actually releasing my own podcast pretty soon, which I'm excited about. Nice. Um, yeah, that'll be out later this month. So yeah, I've got a lot of things going on right now. I keep saying I'm pre-famous. Like I'm about to be famous once the book is out, uh, yeah. but it is available for pre-order. And actually, fun fact, you guys introduced me to my partner, who's like my go-to bookseller, so Nicole and Betty's Pages, they're like my official indie bookstore that I'm working with because I loved her so much when I met her talking on this podcast. And so, yeah, now she's like the person I'm telling everyone to buy their copy from. So. That's awesome. Good, good. So does that mean we're going to have a book signing at Betty's Pages? Yes. I don't know when it is, but it's going to happen. That's awesome. I can't wait. And say, when you get here, we're getting so wasted together. <laughs> Across the road is a brewery. It won't take much for me. I'm like such yeah. a light, but I'll just eat a lot of pasta beforehand. That's a great idea. I mean, yeah, what could go wrong? Nothing in my book, but <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. Um, no, that'd be great. Good for you. And uh, what's the name of the book? It's the witch's way to wealth. There we go. And so, so it says the every witch's guide to making more money faster and easier than ever. And it's basically all about like the fun manifestation stuff, but then it's also about the mindset, the science behind manifestation, like neuroscience, a little bit of quantum physics, light. Um, and then it's got fun stuff like actual spells and like crystals and herbs and things like that so it's like it's it's super fun it's a and it's really funny if i do say so myself but it's yeah it was such a labor of love but it was just such an enjoyable uh endeavor to write just because i love talking and i love sharing and i love writing so it's pretty fun did you have to handwrite everything or did you type it all out and then submit it no, I hand I hand wrote the whole thing. No, of course not. Yeah, I, I that was like I wrote it all up in like Google Drive and then, you know, and it and she's thick. Like she's like almost five hundred pages. Like this is a reference book. It is a doozy, but it's a fun ride. So great. Um, no, that's a uh, is it now? Who are you, who are you using for publishing? Oh my! Um, I'm actually with a top ten publisher. So I'm with the with Sourcebooks. So. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, good for you. Congrats. I this September 19th then. Right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Good for yeah. you. Um, and then you know, we have guests that have turned into authors all of a sudden. That's yeah, really exciting. Yeah, because Adam, Adam, Jesse, and then one of our contributors, who I don't think I can still say who yeah. that is, but yeah, he's, he's got a book he's, coming out. He's got out. a book coming yeah. out. Um, so we got at least three published authors authors on yeah. on the show we're doing pretty well for uh, us not too bad that's uh one of your ahead of the curve yeah well you know we're just like you we're pre-famous granted we've been doing this for three years and all we've gotten is some good beers <laughs> i mean we have <laughs> gotten still some good a win. beers. that is still a win in all honesty i mean jesse did sponsor us she did she yeah. sent us beer um so all right what is so you have i mean gosh you have are you going to go on a big book tour then? 
Well, I've got a lot of speaking engagements lined up like the next few months. So we're going to like piggyback off of that and yeah, probably get some, some book signings and turn it into a little book tour, which I'm so pumped about to like go see people in person. I actually had my first book signing at the publisher. So the week that I spoke at Lavender Law, I had an extra day once the conference was over before I had to head back home and move. So I went out to the publisher which is like right outside of Chicago and did a book signing. It was so, it, it was very surreal, but it was just like, it was so fun. Like I kept having flashbacks to being like 13 and practicing my signature. Cause I was like, I'm going to be famous someday. Yeah. Uh, and then there I am, I'm like signing books. So it was like surreal, but in the best way. I, um, when I get mine signed, I'm getting a winky face on it. So. All right. Yeah. You yeah, got that's, it. That, that's your goal. Yep, I, I say, you know, I is it going to come out on audio? Yes, I'm actually the, recording the audio book at the end of the month. Yeah. You're the voice of it. Good for you. Oh yeah, yeah. I like I when like, the author else need this, made right? My voice. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, I'll probably I'll probably have to listen to it because I don't read. Um, I knew that was coming. I'm not really an educated kind of person, so audio books are still books. So is that what they say? That is what they that's say. The, that's the new saying nowadays. Um, my wife is starting a book club with her friends, which I think it'll go one book and <laughs> then it'll be done. But I'm proud of yeah, it. I, I believe have, that. Yeah, I used to have a wine and cheese club where it was literally we got together once a month to eat cheese and drink wine. We skipped the book altogether. And I highly recommend it because yeah. no one had to feel weird about having read the book or not read the book. It was literally just us eating cheese and drinking wine like that's yeah that's the best kind of club to have i you say i'm a little sad that you were in chicago and didn't let us know because it's three hours from us you know we have a weekly beer club we do actually yeah <laughs> it's called bucks and Let's Let's us. cheers bud <laughs> um as we I both drink like, at the same so, time so i have like no understanding of like the geography of the midwest because i've only lived in like florida and dc essentially yeah. um so i have no idea how close everything is or isn't from chicago so i had multiple people tell me the same thing like you're in chicago i could have come to see you and i was like i didn't i thought that was far like, it's all right when, was far away when you're when you're at buddy's pages we'll definitely come see you because i think that's 45 yeah minutes that's, from us. that's pretty close at, okay. at most. Yeah. i'll be in chicago this weekend yeah there you go let's say um yeah we're here and then the rest of the world is just somewhere else that's what i try to tell people <laughs> i was like that's all that matters in this life <laughs> so we're it. three to four hours from three major cities yeah um all right. So what's next then you have, you have, I mean, well, you're working on the audio, you have the book coming out, you're working on speaking engagements, you're not done. So what's next? Oh man, what's next? Probably a second book, seeing how the first, after seeing how the first one goes. Um, it's one of my goals, like one of my dreams to have a show on Netflix. I'd love to have a TV show. I think I'd be fun on there. I've had it like, cause I have a very high maintenance sister and I have this idea for a show where we just like travel to go see witchy shit, like, you know, and explore witchy shit. And it's half like travel show. And then we also travel to go see scientists who can explain it to us. Like, how is this scientifically possible? Don't disprove it. Explain it, like prove it with science. So that's going to be my goal eventually, probably long term. But you never know; it could happen sooner than we think. So, yeah, no, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, my wife is going on a haunted, sorry, um, like a haunted drink tour in uh, in the end of August. She had me drinks. Yeah, I'm not into I'm not into ghost and haunted yeah. stuff and all that. But like, yeah, they're they're going to do this whole tour thing. So she she likes the witch stuff too. So. Um, I think she wants to go to Salem at some point in our life, but I have no want. <laughs> so bachelor party, we're doing a gangster tour. Yeah, that'd be fun. That will be fun. Um, all right. So you want to do a? Ne- I I have some people that work for Netflix. So um, what? Yeah, yeah. They're they're some investor friends of mine. I guess you need to you know. I uh, say off air. Off air, I'll have to hook you up with that. So yeah, sounds uh, great. 
Uh, that'll be that'll be fun. I can I can I be on the show? I mean, I can't be uh, one of your people yeah. that you follow apparently, <laughs> and uh, can't be one of the people you call when you go to Chicago. Are you going to be the scientist? <laughs> it's a, yes. Say some shit happened over here, and that's Nick. How do you explain this ghosty stuff? <laughs> say, drink a lot of beer. A lot of shit happens. I was gonna say a haunted ghost tour. That sounds like a recipe for definitely seeing a ghost. Like they're onto something. That's a great business model. Yeah, and I say you know, Grand Rapids is actually really old. I mean, every everything Midwest and East is is really old, super old, yeah. and then it gets newer as you get to California or Alaska um it's all old there too it's just yeah. not white people right old the same but, um all right so a netflix show have you started writing have you started writing for that netflix show not yet but it sounds like i'm gonna have to it sounds like you're gonna, like this is gonna be perfect um all right and then now your 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 day-to-day business right you're you're teaching people still how to find their dream job, right? Yep, I do that. So I help people find their dream job. And then I also help people start and scale profitable businesses. So I also help on the business strategy side of things. And I do work with some companies on like creating, like um, helping with their retention rates on their employees. That hasn't been like as big as big, like it hasn't been my main focus, but that's probably like also in the direction that I'll go in. Because I want to, you know, I really want to, like, change work culture for the best from both the top and the bottom, right? Like, changing it from the bottom by talking with people about, like, what you can ask for, what you deserve, um, you know, believing that you're capable of having what you want, that it exists out there. And then also working with people from the top to be like, here's how you can create better work environments that where people don't feel the need like that pressure to leave after two years because that's nobody nobody i've ever worked with has been like yeah i'm so excited to quit my job that because i'm not getting paid well or it's like not a great environment like people don't like job hunting right most people would rather go get a colonoscopy than go through a whole job hunt so i want to go and like really address it at the top as well. Like, how do you create an environment when you don't have the budget to give people the salaries that you may want to give them? What else can you do? How can you create a great workplace for them? David, David shared a really good video with me uh, was it? about a lady who it's something like Grubhub or, or Uber Eats or whatever. Okay. Um, and she just gave the employees uh, an hour a day mm-hmm. to, uh, to not work. Right. So like, they're, they're not supposed to actually work um, in the middle of the day and they can go do whatever they want. Um, and so then, the, you know, an employee asked, well, is that above and beyond our lunch break? And she goes, well, you know, during this hour, you can eat your lunch or you can do whatever you want. <laughs> and take a nap. You take a, yeah. So basically she just resold the legal lunch break to these people <laughs> and just respit oh, it out. Yeah. And I was like, that was, that was really uh, intriguing. I mean, sometimes you got to put a spin on it. <laughs> Say, yeah. So we want you to not do this because you work with a lot of people, Jesse job seeker wise from an employer standpoint, <laughs> a, a shocking trend I'm noticing is for every interview we set up, Let's say every 10 interviews we set up, two people show up to that actual interview. Mm. And I don't understand what is going on. And it doesn't, it's not just us. It's a lot of people. So like one of our vendors set up 35 interviews over two days last week and two people showed up for those interviews. Yeah. What is the motivation to set it up and not show? I have no idea because those are not my clients. Like, honestly, because... (laughs) It's almost like, you know, it feels a lot like online dating. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever, I mean, like, I know you guys have been together with your partners for a while, so I don't know, like, if you had to do the whole Tinder dance at some point. No, never had to do Tinder, but I did meet my wife online. Oh, Oh. (laughs) Xanga. But it's like, 
Yeah, okay. you're like, like, you know, as, like as a woman, I'm like swiping on stuff. This is years ago. I'm like swiping. I'm just like, it's so bad. Like mm -hmm. people don't respond to me or they like send me unsolicited dick pics or it's like. Which this is an actual. Th okay. Yeah. Like I, we, we've had, we've had uh, a guest on here who, who uh, does that type of stuff. Um, yes. And, and, and. I didn't realize how many men actually do this. I always heard about this, but I thought this was a all the time. And I'm like, holy all the time. Balls. Like, guys, yeah. they literally just send it. Oh, I yeah. Have yeah. No yeah. idea. Maybe yeah. it's because I've been married a long time and I've been with my wife, you know, over 20 years. Yeah. But I just assume nobody wants to see that. So I would never think of just sending it to someone. But like, I understand it if it's like, uh, uh, what do you? What do you call those? Uh, uh, you know, a picture that's like, like, like a playgirl, like where it's, it's set in a scene, okay. and like everything is there, and like Boudreaux, is that what it is? Yeah. Or, okay. like, however you say yeah, that. Usually, you don't do that to somebody you don't know. No, right? Yeah. But like all I'm saying is like that's the only time I'd probably send something is like if I had it custom taken for like for a specific yeah, purpose, like, for your wife. Right. Made exactly. sure, and I, I made her a twelve days of night. Right. You know, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's I, like you get them too, huh? Yeah, those are consensual, you know, most yeah. of the time. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's like you know, for a while, I was just like, "Is it me? Like, this is terrible. Like, no. this is like, you know, it's so hard." And it's like, you know, you go through like a hundred, like fifty, a hundred people before you have like one date, and then you don't know if it's going to be a good date or not. And then, like, I remember. My brother hmm. was complaining about online dating and I'm like, it can't be as good, as bad as it is for women. Like, let me see. No, it's bad. Like it's, it's just like women not responding, mm -hmm. no clit pics or anything, but it's like, you sure. know, like, it's just like, they don't respond yep. or, you know, they unmatch really fast or they're just like kind of weird. It was just like, I was like, wow, I don't hmm. know how anybody gets together anymore. I have no idea. And so I have that same kind of thought about like job hunting. Cause I have like the job hunting clients I work with are like, why are people always ghosting me? Like, why mm -hmm. can't I get a response saying like, you haven't been selected so I can move on with my life. Why do I have to chase people down just to get rejected? Yeah. And then I have like people who are trying to hire people saying like, why can't I get anybody good in the door? And I'm like, I really have no idea. Like, honestly, like, I don't know why it's so bad. Because if you talk to people who are hiring, they're like, they're, they're, the worker pool is awful. There's no talent. Mm -hmm. There's nobody who's interested. Um, and then when you talk to the job hunters, they're like, there are no good jobs. I can't find anything. And, you know, people don't respond to me. So I really, I honestly, I think it's like, when it like the online dating situation it's just like yeah. i have no idea how anybody finds anyone anymore yeah well it's good to hear so, that i mean guys have the same problem that girls have we I, had a, a job interview yesterday yeah and they don't show and dawn sends out her normal message hey since you didn't show up i'm assuming you don't want the job anymore but it'd be nice if you just told the employer hey i'm not interested instead of just not showing yeah she got a reply back hey i didn't miss my interview I had a dentist appointment. What? That Literally, that's what he said. I didn't miss my interview. I had a dentist appointment. Well, great. You didn't tell us about the dentist appointment. So you missed your fucking interview. And he goes, can I reschedule now? And she sends it to me. And I'm like, fuck no. no. I would have said yes. <laughs> and then not showed up. Like, I would have said it for like... I don't know, a Monday at like five o'clock or six. Yeah. You're not and here. just not show up. It's been like, yeah, sorry, we had dentist appointment. We had, you know, we had a dentist. Sorry, our cat, our cat called and said we had to come home. I, I, the, the audacity of him to go. Oh, I didn't miss my yeah. interview. I had a dentist. Oh, cool. That's great. You got a reminder that you had an interview too. You could have just said, hey, I have a dentist appointment. I'm not going to make the interview. Yeah. Um. No, and, and I think a lot of it, right, when you, when you, okay, so warehouses and factories mm -hmm. is having a hard time. Okay, well, the only way they're going to get somebody from a different place is to offer more money, right? Yeah. But it's really hard because you talked about, hey, having no skill and no talent. Okay. You know, if I walk into a place right now, if I want to go back and get a job, let's say Gentex, I mean, mm -hmm. I was, I was making 23. I don't even know. And you want me to go drive a Hilo? Well, we start at 16, 18. Well, 
No, I, I have experience. Well, we'll start. Yes, eighteen. Right? No, like I mean, I'm I'm I've, I have ten more years of experience than the person that's walking, or you know, fifteen years more experience than the person walking. Yeah. No, start me at higher because I'm worth more than that. Right? Like you don't have to sit here and train me on that. Well, we don't know that. Great. So when I show you, I can. Beep, beep a horn and look backwards you're gonna pay me five bucks an hour more uh, again i think and i think jesse can speak to this there are a lot of job seekers that know their worth and they're just not willing to take less am, am i wrong no that's absolutely the case and more and more people are thinking that way you know i've i've said that like the pandemic is really like what changed a lot of things and i you know i'm like the last thing you want is like all of your employees to sit around thinking about like whether they're happy or not or whether they deserve more or not you know and it was also like that you know that moment where it's like you know i tell my clients all the time i'll be like you know when they feel guilty about leaving their workplace or something i say what happens if you die tomorrow what are they going to do everyone's going to be sad for like a week and then they're going to repost the job online like they're not going to give that a second thought because like that's a need that they have to fill you have to have that same kind of mentality about it. You have to like realize like what your worth is. Like you don't work for a company. You work for me, Inc. That's it. You know, you work for yourself. That needs to be the top priority. And so I think that that's like something that a lot of like talented and skilled workers are starting to see where they're like, you know, there are companies out here who will invest in my growth or invest in like my skills or see me as an asset and like provide me with, good compensation and benefits yeah. and you know i think it's i think a lot of companies and industries are reeling from the fact that workers have finally had that realization well it's i i have a niece who is 19 who's um just frustrating as hell to me you know um she worked here as for 19 nothing. year olds are <laughs> right well you know she did work here right and so i was like and i even told her i was like look go get a full-time job do that part-time like but you know, she just took a job at a gas station making $14 an hour. And there is factories and other things. Like, I have a gas station by my house that's starting at 15. And she went and took one farther away from her own self, like, for 14. She... Mm -hmm. Spartan yeah. across the road, so I earned for 21. 21, yeah, 19, 21. Yeah, like, and so I'm sitting here just going, oh, my God. Like, if you're going to trade your time for money, it better be the most money for the least amount of time. Mm -hmm. right? Like, understand that you're you're giving up your life like you're trading something that you have that they want something that you want that they right. have right like and nope 14 bucks an hour i don't think she has any fucking benefits like nothing you know she, sure. doesn't, she doesn't understand that right and, mm -hmm. and 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 i'm like hey how much are you investing well i'm putting into my savings account okay when's the last time you touched your savings account well it's been a while what's a while two weeks like you know like you know good, good for you right like you know, we, we went to Florida and I, yeah, I, I, I found out, you know, basically cause she's like, Oh yeah, I've been saving. I've been saving. Oh, I can't afford to do this or whatever. And I was like, wait, you've been working for six months and you can't afford a hundred dollars. Like what, like, what do you have planned? What? No, I don't have, I don't have money until I get paid on Friday. Wait, you told me you've been saving this whole time. Like I've asked you, I don't care where you financially are. Don't fucking lie to me. Right. Like I don't care. Right. It, it, if you just say, Hey, I'm broke. Can't do it. I don't care. Like, cool. I got this. But if you're going to tell me that you've been saving, you've been doing all this. No, I care. No, I'm pissed. Right. Well, you know, looking at the job market, let's say, I, I, I think employees have something that they haven't had in 40 years, which is some control and some power for a little bit. And companies are really trying to get that back. That's why you're seeing all this return to work bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, my boss, who I like, said to us at one point yeah i don't think we're going to bring you back to the office and my answer was that's great because i haven't been in the office since 2011 and i'm never coming back and she went oh well i don't see any reason to ever bring you back good because i'm not coming back i'll just quit <laughs> yeah i'm out and that's uh yeah you know. there's also you know a lot of there's a, so much shame around money for so many people too mm -hmm. so it's like you know when you're like young and dumb and broke, it's like you're almost embarrassed to admit that you're young and dumb and broke because you don't want to be seen as a kid anymore. And so you're like, yeah, I've been saving and I've been doing this and it may not be realistic. I mean, it's not like a realistic take on like where you actually are. And so it's, you know, it's always like, a, it's always a weird place to be, a weird place to like navigate those things. And I think that, you know, we as a society are only kind of coming around to that idea now 
you know, before it would, you know, that old saying was like, you never talk about like money, politics or religion. Right. Yep. And like now it's people are realizing that by not talking about money, that's where, you know, you end up screwing yourself because you don't know if you're like getting paid more or less, especially when it comes to like marginalized groups and women and things like that. Like half the time it's like, you know, someone who's got your same job, but happens to be male or somebody who came in after you because you've been there for a few years came in at a higher salary and you have no idea because you're not having those conversations because that's like not the polite thing to do and like we need to be talking about money openly all the Mm -hmm. time and like really like getting like you know dispelling with that shame that like keeps us from being open about it yeah, we were talking about that in one of the episodes. Like yep. I, my Gentex job, I mean, I started at $10 as a temp, got hired in at 11 and then two weeks later got my raise to 1370 in the warehouse um, because I've had, you know, I was working my temp in the warehouse, had to go to the line for two weeks and then got hired in um, and then got my job. But so then we we're talking in the break room and, and there was a guy that had been there for nine years or seven years, whatever it was. And I was making 15 cents more than him mm. an hour. And he was pissed. And so then the company went back and like, oh, hey, yeah, this is our new starting D level rate. And they had to bring everybody that was in level D up to my current salary. And I'm like, dude, granted, I have I had just the same amount of experience type thing from past jobs, but not in that company. And so he was making just as much as me. They So they retroactive like six months worth or however long, three months worth. So they all got like, you know, $200 checks for the 15 cents for hours that they worked. But yeah, so if you don't talk about it like you have no idea what these people are making i'm on the phone yesterday with my co-worker and yeah. i said you know basically what i make and my wife goes should you be saying that i'm like she knows what the fuck i make i don't make any i don't keep this a secret i don't really yeah. give a shit if they know or not well that's, and it's hard because like older you know older generations and older people um you know when i walk into a company i always tell, find the oldest person and try to figure out what the fuck they make because you've been there the longest I mm-hmm. want to know what my top yep. potential is. And if you're making two bucks more an hour than me and you've been there for 25 years, oh shit, like this isn't going to go well for the both of us, right? No, like, you're going to get shitty raises. Yeah, no, hard pass for me. And, you know, I tell people all the time, I was like, if you ever walk, if you ever drive into a job, you look in the parking lot, see what people are driving because the average American will spend what they, ha- what they make. Yep. So, Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you drive in, everybody's driving this beater ass truck. It's not everybody's financially responsible. It's that they're paying that shitty yeah. that people are not doing this right. The one guy's right. over leveraging his truck that he has. Not, but like, you know, I I remember that at New Life. I mean, everybody just had beat ass cars, and I'm just like, oh crap, this job's not going to pay shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, you go to Gentex, and it's like, oh man, there's a mix of quite a bit. So this is going to be a decent looking job, mm-hmm. and it did. It paid pretty well. You know, I have no complaints about their pay in, in a general sense of things so, yeah it's just the rest of it yeah so everything it was all, all goes back to how it ended um so when 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 do you see when do you see companies actually listening to the employees and, and getting on their can you can you walk us through how you've helped with employee engagement and things like that or um getting them getting them just as much as the the top person Right. So like a lot of times, like, you know, I tell people, I tell the, I tell the company, like, if you're going to re-engage your employees and you're going to hire me, you need to understand that like, they're either going to get re-engaged or they're going to go find another job because, you know, it tends to be like almost like a 50, 50 split. Some people are not engaged in the job because they're in the wrong job and, or they just like, it doesn't light them up. They don't care or whatever. Like that's a real thing that happens. And then the other half is going to be like people who want to be engaged, but they don't feel like they're a valued part of that company or that organization. And so, you know, part of it is going to be communication. Like how are, how do you have, you know, management communicating? And then also like, how are you keeping tabs on management as well? Because, you know, a big part of that is like the 360 review. I don't know if you've heard of these before where it's like, you know, annually, the employee is not the only one getting a performance review, they're also going to review their manager. And I like to talk about these, even though they're, you know, can sound like scary, right? Because it's like, oh, well, 
we don't want that much power. But I say that it's not that like, if you see one, that one person saying anonymously, like, oh, this person's a terrible manager and yada, yada, yada. You're like, okay, well, that could be a personality clash. But if you're seeing that over and over and over again, then that tells you there's a problem. The other part of that being exit interviews. Are you actually conducting appropriate exit interviews when people are leaving? And are you actually like looking into the things that they say? Because most people like don't like, you know, on the exit interview, they're going to say something. They're going to like, you know, at least give you a, a taste of the tea if it's not in, like entirely like bashing it. And so you need to take those things seriously and really look into it because that's how you can kind of get ahead of the problems. And then finally, like looking at the ways that you can show appreciation if you don't have the budget for like salary raises. I know so many people are afraid of a potential recession happening again or an economic downturn. So like I get it, but paying for somebody, like if you were to pay for somebody to go to a conference and like get training, it's like, let's say like hotel, conference registration, all of that. Let's say it's like gonna be five grand, right? That is going to make that person feel so important and so like cared for and so appreciated. And it's going to have that same impact and it's 15 grand shorter than a $20,000 salary raise, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you're able to communicate the same kind of thing on a budget where you, and you can have that transparency too. I think, especially with younger generations, they really care about transparency. So if you're saying, listen, I can't give you the raise that you want this year, but what I can do is I can like get you some learning. I can pay for a degree. I can pay for some classes or I can send you to a conference. Like I want you to know that you're appreciated. I want you to know that we want to keep you here long-term. So where can we give you things that like are going to help you be better in this role and show that you're appreciated, yeah. you know? So it just, it, it's going to vary depending on the organization and the people involved, but it's, you know, it starts with those big kind of big silos. Yeah. I think that was one of my biggest problems with Gen Tech. I mean, granted they, they did a lot like their, you know, reimbursement for college and stuff like that, but there was an opportunity to go to the Germany warehouse and, they wanted a boss and they wanted, and you know, two employees. And I was like, they're like, Hey, who has passports? And I was like, I was the only person. They're like, Hey, you need to go get your passport and you. And I was like, I have mine. I've been here for, you know, 10 years. Like, why the hell am I not going? Oh, well, you know, you don't have a college degree and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what the fuck? That doesn't make any difference. You know, so it's basically, Hey, no matter what, you're not going anywhere. And I'm like, cool. You, you've spoken loud and clear. Like I know where I stand at this mm -hmm. point. Right. And it's like, Oh, Again, it was supposed to be an employee. It wasn't supposed to be like, hey, who's moving up and doing whatever, right? I, I'm all for higher education. You know, I'm yep. I'm educated. Now, way to go. But it doesn't necessarily mean you're smart. No. And, 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 and those things irritate the shit out of me. Oh, my God. There's so many stupid lawyers I went to school with. Yeah. Like, how did you, how have you gotten here, you know? Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I you know, and, and it's funny because, you know, these people are talking about like, oh, hey, pizza parties and things like that. And it's OK, it's different when you're working for a multi-million dollar company versus you guys offering pizza. Right. Like mm -hmm. you guys offering pizza is huge. You're a small business. They see that you're trying. Right. Um, and I, So when I was having my last medical issue. Yeah. And I had to run the business. When Dawn got back that day, I bought pizza for the two guys. And that meant a lot to them because they worked their ass off for me that day. Yeah. I bought a fucking hot and ready, Nick. Mm -hmm. It was, what is it? Seven bucks? Six, yeah. Six bucks. So exactly. they were thrilled because, you know, I appreciated them and, and they felt valued because I spent seven bucks on a fucking pizza for them. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, you know, one's 28 and the other one's 16. So I know I can motivate them. food. So <laughs> I do. But again, it's the small gestures when you're at a small business yep. because, you know, we're not making millions of dollars a year. You know, we're busting our ass just to try and break even. Well, and, and you know, I say, I won't say where my wife works, um, the current company or whatever, but, um, you know, she's been, everybody's been talking about wanting more money and things like that. And then of course you look up the CEO and during COVID, everything was like oh we can't do anything we're on lockdown like we're afraid of no raises 
but the CEO got his biggest raises during this COVID period of time. Mm. And, you know, he's making $500,000 more, (laughs) you know, and it's like, holy shit. Like, and and I'm trying to explain to her, I was like, look, that's a, you know, he's raised 200% in the five years you've been here Mm -hmm. and you've raised what? Six, six percent, like not even. I think it's like four point two percent, right? Because you get a three percent raise and another three percent raise, and only goes up to like four and a half, right? Like you haven't gotten anything, you know. And this guy gets a two hundred percent. So the the pay difference is, you know, and that's why I say like, hey, if you're giving if you're giving the top person a raise, great, you get three percent, right? Like, hey, you get three percent, you get three. You know, Oprah Winfrey, baby, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. Yeah, everybody gets the same car. The thing is, is that like so many people think like, oh, that's the status quo. So I can't like argue about it. Right. Like every CEO is doing that. That's how it is at every company. But that's not true. You know, like one yeah. of my favorite people, especially on LinkedIn, is Dan Price. He's the oh, CEO gosh, no. of Gravity. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gravity Payments, where he took a massive pay cut to make sure that they didn't have to lay anybody off. I think it was like during the pandemic. And then yeah. like they their starting salary, no matter what your role is, when you come in is $70,000. Yep. And like he has accepted lower salaries to make sure that that happens. And that guy's like still making hand over fist. Mm-hmm. Like that's, he's he's not hurting from that decision. He's just not making what, you know, the people at the top of other organizations are. Yeah, we had we had a Dan Price episode. And then we did. I lost a little respect uh, in 2020 for him the end of december the so, uh allegations the allegations that the, are still ongoing yeah sexual mm-hmm. assault deleg- yeah. allegations yeah so yeah that that cut me to the core because i really liked Dan yeah, price you, you were a I, big damn price guy i was and that kind of cut me to the core yeah. no and, I, you know, and again i mean jesse brings up a great point as a ceo so you don't make five million you make one yep can you live with it because I can. Yeah. Um, and and you know, that's uh we were talking about this. Uh my electrician and I actually called yeah. me today and we were talking and I, you know, we we're talking about raising prices. So my electrician, right? You used to be able to buy a hundred foot of wire for thirty dollars. Now you go buy it for 120. He said, Look, the prices of everything has gone crazy. And I said, right now, currently what's going on is they are literally cutting this middle class. They don't want a middle class anymore. So if you were on the teeter of poor to middle, you were officially poor. Correct. If you were nowhere near that upper class, you were poor. Yes. Like, you know, I said the, the difference is like, hey, we're making, you know, even if you're at $180,000 a year, well, you lived up to that. So now you're still in that lower end where the guy who made $50 million is now making 49. His stake choice didn't change. His life didn't change. He still got the damn boat that he wanted. He did everything that he still wanted. He just took a million dollars and a million dollars to him didn't change any part of his life where, you know, I know, and it's a gambling addiction, but like, I know people when they play a lottery and they get so excited for a hundred bucks. Right. And it's just like, you have to understand that what's happening right now is they're literally trying to cut this middle class so Mm -hmm. far out of life. Like, Hey, you know what? Because they ex- they expect everybody to just take it. Yep, and and but people will, and, right? and they are. Unfortunately, yep. I mean, I, I I've said before, a hundred thousand a year used to be the the cutoff for us. And if we made over a hundred thousand, we can do pretty much anything we want. Mm-hmm. I think we made one hundred and six last year. Yeah, and I, you know, with the medical debt I have from trying to die, we're living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, that's just what it is. Yep, and mm-hmm. it fucking sucks. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so true. Yeah. And, you know, they, there was a stat that came out like past couple of years saying like, um, you miss out. I think it was like your salary will be like what I think it was like 40 or 50% lower if you don't switch jobs. Like Mm -hmm. if you switch jobs every few years, you can pretty much get a 20% increase on your salary with each job change. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the thing that like people are now realizing is that like they like people don't want to job hop. Nobody's doing that because they like love starting over and meeting a bunch of strangers and learning a whole new role. Like nobody enjoys that process, but it's the only the only way that they have to advance that salary. Yeah, I, you know, I'll give a great example of this. So I have a buddy who wants to get into real estate. Um, He was working for 
uh, a medical company. He was making, so I don't remember the exact, let's say 2000, 2004, he started. He was making, let's call it $20 an hour. Mm-hmm. 2008, 9, 10 hits, whatever. During that time, he takes a 10% pay cut. So he goes to $18, goes all the way up until two years ago. And he was back to 20 or very close to it. Right. That's how long, that's how shitty his raises were along the way. Two years ago, quits his job, goes and takes a job for 15 or $16 an hour working for a friend of mine, just because he wanted to get into real estate, gives it a good solid effort for two years, Mm -hmm. calls back the job that he originally had and was like, Hey, you guys hiring? Yep. Now is making $29 an hour Mm -hmm. because that's their new starting, starting rate. If he never quit, he would only be at like $21. So like, I'm like, holy yeah. shit balls. Like they're willing yeah. to give it to the new person, but not to you. Like, well, then again, I think this, this goes generationally. So Gen X is way less invested in, in job hopping. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I've been at my job 20 some odd years. I'm Gen X. I, I really don't want to switch. Yeah. Whereas millennials are like, fuck it. You're going to pay me $2 more an hour. I'm out. Bye. Yep. I had somebody at a talk ask me, they were like, I don't understand. Like you're saying that like millennials and Gen Z are so like afraid of financial instability. Like why would you leave a job? And it was like a Gen X person. Like, well then I would never leave my job uh, out of like that same fear of financial stability. And like what it comes down to is it's those historic events that millenni- that like shaped millennials and Gen Z's views on work and workplace culture. And a big one of those being the 2008 recession and the rise of the gig economy, because what happened is that millennials were the ones graduating, not having jobs or having to stay in internships a lot longer or take a bunch of gig jobs like, you know, piece together income from multiple jobs. And so they trust themselves over the company. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I'll always fall on my feet. I know I can always make rent at like rent at the end of the month if I if I'm only depending on myself. And like, that's where that comes from. And so it's like the fear of stability, like the fear of financial instability is what keeps them seeking the higher salary outward, like outside of the company that they're in. Whereas for a lot of Gen Xers, that stability comes from staying in the same place. Like Mm -hmm. this is a guaranteed paycheck. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I've looked for jobs since I finished my degree. Yeah. But if I leave within two years, I have to pay back all the money they gave me. Sure. So I'm not looking hard, but I probably applied to 60 different jobs in the last year and a couple months. Ask me how many interviews I've had. <laughs> Go on. None. Really? Not a fucking one. Hmm. You send your resume to Jesse. She'll look it over. Tell you what you're yeah. doing wrong. Well, the thing is that like, it's like networking really is mm-hmm. like what it comes down to, to find like the good stuff, because this is like the, this is the thing I always, I always see is that like, a lot of jobs because you'll go on linkedin and like there are good jobs there and then it'll say like 500 applicants right like so many hundreds of people have applied already to it you don't even know if that job's available you don't know if it's like held for somebody else and they just have to comply and put it up for a certain number of days you have no idea Mm -hmm. and like half the time like you know most like a lot of jobs get filled without ever getting posted anywhere Mm -hmm especially like the companies people are dying to work for like that you know people love or that have really great benefits people refer their friends because they want to like work with their friends maybe they get like one of those bonuses for you know bringing out like referring somebody to a job so those jobs don't get posted they're getting filled like filled through referral Mm -hmm. or they're getting filled before they're even out there And so the only way to figure out, like, is this actually a job that's available is to network because somebody will tell you, oh, yeah, so that's like an internal hire. Somebody's like switching departments or someone's getting upgraded or whatever. You know, I had when I was doing my last job hunt, which I landed my job like solely through networking, I didn't send out a single cold application. You know, I people saved me loads of time just still telling me like, yeah, that job's not actually available or that job salary is like way below what you're making right now. So it's like not worth you even looking at it. For and sure. that's still valuable. People think like, oh, that's like demoralizing. And it's like, no, that just saved me so many hours of time of like 
tailoring my resume and writing a cover letter and sending this in and all the follow-up emails or like, God forbid, they bring me in for an interview to do the whole song and dance. And it's like the job wasn't even like really, I had no run. I had no chance at it anyway. Yeah. And that's like where networking really comes in because that's how, especially like if you're not super looking, that's the best time to be networking because you get to just like build your network and like recruit mm -hmm. people to your team to like be your professional friends. And it's like, they'll keep you in mind as the years go on, as long as you're like touching base now and then and things mm -hmm. like that. It's like, that's the best place to be in. I always say like, you wanna start your job hunt. As soon as you have the idea of like, you know, maybe I'll be ready for a job in like another year or two, that's when you start networking. Because if you wait until you're ready, that's when it's like, you're so desperate to leave that you'll take anything, anything else. Yeah. yeah, you won't have the same standards that you do when you're casually looking. Yep. Well, it's, I, you know, um, when I when I got my last one, I, mean, I didn't apply in any way, right? It was a casual conversation and stuff like that. Hey, oh, you're, you're looking for some side stuff? Great, why don't you come do this? Yeah, I, walk me through what you see this looking like. Right. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, let's do this, <laughs> you know? Um, and then... You know, I, I get people all the time. Hey, oh, you should come work for me. Well, walk me through it. And I'm thinking thirty thousand dollars a year, and you work ninety hours a day. You're like, yeah, no. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be a hard pass for me, dog. Like, yeah, but you have mm -hmm. so much knowledge. I know, I know, I do. Like, that's why it's worth way more than that, yeah, buddy. You need to pay for that knowledge. <laughs> you know, oh, mm -hmm. you know. That's yeah. why, like, I always say, like, one of the tricks that I teach people is that, like, when you get a job offer, um, like always like if you're nervous you're like oh they seem great but i don't know if they're just like putting on a whole song and dance for me so you can always say like oh my god i'm so excited like i'm you know so honored that you offered it to me could i talk one-on-one -on -one with the team members i'd be working with more like the most before i formally accept because if you've ever been at a shitty job which most of us have and yeah. you've seen someone come in for an interview and you're like joking with your coworkers. You're like, run, don't do it. Like, I wish mm -hmm. I could tell them how bad it is here. Most of those people will tell you, maybe not directly, but they'll tell you in a way that helps you read between the lines. Mm -hmm. yep. So networking is really good for that too. Cause they'll tell you like straight up, like don't work here. It's horrible. Um, but if you get to the point where you have an offer, like everything's looking pretty good, that's always a way you can kind of, you know, navigate it to make sure because people who genuinely love their job will like, they'll tell you. And like, when you phrase it, like, I want to talk to the people I'd be working with the most, they can't necessarily like, you know, oh, here's our happiest delusional employee, you know, or like star child whom we love. Yeah. It's going to be the people that you're actually working with. Well, and then I you mean, have more freedom to yeah, have that conversation. And when I was looking, I had that happen. I applied, I had two interviews with the owner. I mean, she, she's a great owner. I mean, I really give her so much credit and uh, we talked and I was like, you know, I told her where I was. I was like, look, I'm in real estate. I'm looking for something. I, I just, I have this little short of a plan. Um, You know, I'm a very honest person. Sometimes I shouldn't be as honest, but you know, I was like, look, I think at the time it was like, I need 10 more years, 12 more years. And I don't know where I'll be after that. Um, You know, this is where I see myself. And I talked to the employees and the employees like, look, it's a basic job. You're just going to, you're going to work and we're going to go home and well, you know, she's, she's cool to work for stuff like that. But you know, it's not, it's not everything. Right. I'm like, yeah, cool. That's all I'm looking for. And she sat me down in like the third interview type thing. She's like, Hey, I just want to be honest with you. Like, I think you have so much more potential than being here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to give you what you want. I don't think this. And I was like, I completely respect that. Like, mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, right? Like, let me buy into the business and, you know, we'll be partners. But, um, you know, because we were talking about this. She's like, oh, I need a $75,000 machine. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I, I can do a loan, <laughs> right? Like, and, uh, you know, but it was just because, you know, here the job was like 16 bucks an hour. It was just around the corner type there. Yeah. And uh, I think, it, I still think it'd be a great job for me just because, like, I love to make signs and stupid shit, like, mm -hmm. all day. You know, for me, it'd just be a hobby. But she wanted a actual full of work yeah. or work or work somebody invested but, but you know she was great she was very honest and like hey really you have so much more potential than being just what i can offer you and i was like yeah but 
And I, you know, I, I even tutored her. Like, I was like, Hey, where do you see yourself in five years? Because I want to be this high. I want to be this. I want this, 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 like, if you're telling me you're going to own the world, I want to be right there with you owning the world. Right. <laughs> like I'm fine. Yeah. With this. yeah. I had that happen to me too. Like I had a former law school classmate who had interviewed at an office where I was working. It was like about a year or two out uh, after graduation and it was a horrible place. Like it was a terrible environment and the pay was really shitty. And it was just like, the boss was horrible. Like it was just like, I, I, I was there for a year and I left and she had asked me ahead of time. She was like, Hey, I see like you're working here. You know, they called me to set up an interview. Just wanted to see like, you know, what's going on. And I was like, what's your phone number? Like, let's right. get on, you know? And then I was like, you need to run. I was like, I know you're desperate for a job. I know like you've, you know, you're coming to the end of your savings and stuff. It is not worth it. It's, it's going to trap you. It's a dead end place. Like, do not do it. And so she was like, oh, OK. So she canceled her interview. And I think it was like maybe like a month, two months later, she ended up getting an incredible job. And she's like still there. Like she's still at this law firm, like loving life. Um, but it's like people will shoot you straight for the most part, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and I think most employees will, right? Say if you're talking to the HR team who does nothing for you as a person. Because HR right. just absolutely sucks, right? I mean, They're there for the company, not the one hundred employees, right? So, um, I, but, I can tell you, you know, we're going through a, a transition at our place. Yep. In what I do, and I'm at that age now where I have no fucks left to give. So I was on a meeting today with you know the person that's the head of this transition, and he goes, "How you feeling?" I'm like, "Not very damn good." I can tell you that all right, what's going on? And I, I laid it all out because I have no fucks left to give. Right. And he's like, all right, well, we need to address these things because we need you to be comfortable. And I'm like, great. I'm, you're at least saying the right shit because I'm the one going to be using this. And if I'm not comfortable, I'm just not doing it. Plain and simple. Don't care. And I mean, I'm at that point in, in my career of been there over 20 years. You want to make a go of something that isn't going to work. You're doing it without me. I'm out. Yeah. I'll go find something else. I don't, I don't really care. And I mean, you know, there are a lot of employees out there that feel that way. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I think most, you know, most managers put up with it because they've had them as employees for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. You, you've gone through more managers than anybody I know. But Michael Jordan, 23. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it it's insane that you've gone through more managers than years you've worked there. Right? Yeah. That's, um, but, you know, and, and we go back to it and people don't leave, you know. Jobs. People, right. They leave bad managers. Yeah bad companies things like that right i mean nobody leaves when they're happy the hardest <laughs> i've looked is when i've had bad managers yeah and mm -hmm. you know my manager right now i like my manager she's good yeah so i mean i'm looking but i'm not looking right you're not going out there going oh man i no. did a job yesterday nope so yeah you're looking from like a growth standpoint like right. oh what could be out there is there something that like i that could light me up again you know like it's not like get me the fuck out of here because mm -hmm. this person is nuts yeah yep. yeah it's the best that's the best time to be looking you yeah because you look casually well and, and you know when i was in your position right i 23 managers i'd just sit there and go why the hell am i not the manager of this department like um you know that that would be the thing that would drive me crazy i've been asked several times do i want to progress to management at this company and my answer has been the same every time fuck no because i i see what happens to the managers of this company yeah they either get fed up and they leave or they lose their soul yeah and i'm just not willing to do either one of those yep. you know i i'm happy to work next to my cats and if i need to take a break i know i can take a break yeah no big thing i managed people like when i was at my college newspaper I was like, oh, I want to be the editor-in-chief. So I, like, worked my way up, got to editor-in-chief. I'm, like, managing a, you know, it's, like, a staff of, like, 10 to 15 direct reports, but it's, like, a whole staff of, like, 50 people. Never again. 
Okay. Like, I'm not a management person. Okay. Herding cats. Like I did not mm-hmm. understand what that phrase meant until I was in that role where I was like, this is fucking terrible. Like, this is just like, just, Oh my God. Like everybody's going in different directions and there's a fire every day. And I cannot like I'm best in small teams. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's how I, how I thrive. Like I managed before that I was like managing a team of four beautiful we were like the best functioning team in that you know at that place but oh my god no i couldn't do i couldn't do management like that um, well again I, I equate it to this you coached for me mm-hmm. jeff fun yeah sure. i didn't have any fun because i was the head coach right i have fun now because i'm not the head coach just, anymore just get up and leave. everybody likes me i'm the happy fun guy and that's awesome being in charge sucks. Well, I think it was it was probably one of the worst days of my life. Um, was at Gentex. Um, I've always been a happy, fun guy. Mm-hmm. And that's what most people know of me, right? And oh man, yeah, Nick, he's the life of the party. And uh I was dealing with a boss, another employee was around, and we were dealing with a truck or whatever. He was like, Nick, why are you so unhappy? And the guy looked and he goes, it's Nick. He's never happy. And I was like, what the fuck? Those words have never been said about me. And I was like, it just like hit my heart. Right. And I was like, holy shit. I have to take a look at myself. Wow. Like at that moment. Right. It was just like, what? Like, I've never had those words said about me. And, it, you know, I was like, all right, I'm changing myself. <laughs> and so like from that day, I was like, now nah, I'm going to make this about. And so then I, you know, just kept using the company to buy houses and stuff. But well, I mean, jobs can make you miserable. Oh, God, yes. Mm-hmm. And if they make you miserable, you're just miserable all the damn time. Yep. Well, it was the boss. I mean, the boss was just absolute. What a horrible. Well, company. and again, why do you quit? Yeah. Well, because the job sucks. <laughs> so, um, now, all right. So I want to get back to your book because I want you to plug it again. What do you. What are you teaching in this book? You're teaching people the the ability to what to do with money? So I'm teaching like a, a bunch of things, really. So I'm teaching both like some of the, you know, so like a lot goes into manifestation of money magic. Like I like to say that it's usually like a three-step formula and it's, they're pretty broad. The steps are like align your intentions, embody them deeply, take inspired action daily. And I got that from actual magic. So like I am a practicing witch. That's like how I identify. And that those are the steps that you really need to like for to cast an effective spell. Meaning like when when you say like align your intentions, that's about making sure you don't have internal resistance. And so when it comes to making money, that's where it's like you have to take inventory of like where are the places where I'm holding shame? Where are the places where I'm not being honest with myself or I'm not being authentic about what I want. You know, a lot of times we kind of plug along in our careers because we think like this is the path I need, I'm supposed to take, or this is like, I can't leave this job because people depend on me or my parents will not be proud of me if I like leave my legal career behind or whatever it is. Right. That's like, you know, where it was for me. So aligning your intentions is about getting your brain on board with like what it is you're actually wanting because it's not just about making money it's about making money in a way that's going to be sustainable for you and so that is like where you have to like really do the deep dive on like what's going on in my brain that's creating resistance to me making like getting ahead when it comes to making money embodying your embodying those intentions that's when we get into the things about like how am i going to create a life that starts looking like how I envision my life when I'm making the money that I want. And so that goes in a few different ways. So first of all, if you've never seen somebody who has the kind of life that you want or the job that you want, it's going to be really hard for you to create it because your brain's like, well, that doesn't exist. So you have to like find people, like find role models who show you like, hey, what you want is possible. It's out there and you can find it. It's also about like, how do you get your day-to-day routine or your environment set up in a way to support those new goals? So that can look like something magical where it's like deity work, right? You can like work with a god or a goddess because they represent something, right? Like a really easy example is like Venus or Aphrodite. Oh, I want to like find love. And so if I'm trying to like 
embody Venus or like Venusian energy, I'm going to like make sure I like look cute every day. I feel beautiful. I wear perfume, like things like that. Not necessarily because it's like, oh, I'm going to do that. And I'm magically going to attract somebody, but because it makes you start living like you are that person, like you do have that thing. So I talk about breaking that down and thinking about what your rich life looks like. So, you know, if, and even if you don't have the funds to get it now, there are usually ways to get there. So let, like, let's say you're like, okay, well, when I have that goal, I'm going to have a cleaner because I'm a messy slob and I can't keep my house clean. I am one of these people. So I don't like to clean my floors. It's like the grossest thing to me. I do not like to sweep or vacuum or mop. Like that's like the thing that I cannot seem to do, but I do love to cook. So I could trade with a friend. I could say like, Hey, you buy the groceries, I'll meal prep for you for like the week, like do all your dinners so you don't have to worry about it. And all you have to do is clean my floor. And like we trade and my brain doesn't know the difference. My brain's like, we have a cleaner now, look at us. <laughs> and what happens is that your brain says, wait a second, I'm only supposed to have this once I have the goal or once I have the amount of money. And because your brain is a problem solving machine, it'll start to find solutions to close the gap. That's when you start getting these inspired ideas on like, maybe I should reach out to this person, or maybe I should look at this job board, or maybe I should go to this event. And then finally, like taking inspired action daily, that's where it's like you're following that, those intuitive downloads. So some of that, that's like where it comes in the practical financial advice. Budgeting is a real thing that we got to like figure out how to do. So is, you know, um, understanding like personal finance and like what our goals are and how to get there, how to network your way to a job or how to start a business or, you know, getting real with yourself and saying like, I either need to cut my expenses or bring in more money. That practical stuff, that's how you take that inspired action. So you're not just following your intuition, you're starting to really go out and change the way that you're doing things. And, you know, it can also be like spells and things like that, but really at the end of the day, Science, just like they say, like magic is science, science is magic. I like to say that money magic is personal finance and personal finance is money magic. You just have to be willing to kind of go out after both. And so that's what this book is doing. It's looking not just at the money mindset aspect, not just at the budgeting and job hunting and starting business stuff, not just at the magic, it's all of it because it all kind of needs to happen together. That's when you start to get those magical effects and it feels like, wow, my life is like so charmed. And really you're just like doing the work with a new perspective. Yeah. I saying that's, I think it'll help a lot of people to look at it like, you know, in a different way than normal people look at things. I agree. Cause like I've said that I was spending years trying to find a book like this because I could find piecemeal things. Like all I could really find was like a spell book for money spells. And I was like, that's not really what I'm looking for. Like I want to like, you know, I need to like look internally and then I also need like practical steps. And then I also want to understand like how the science of all of this works. And like, I wanted a bunch of, different things and i could never find it in one space so i was like well i guess i guess i'm gonna have to create it then and that's where that book was born from there you go um and now it's okay so it's available pre-sale where can people find it so if they just go to the witch's way to wealth.com or come to my website which is jessicadasilva.com there's like a books tab and that'll take you straight to where you can order it but it's wherever books are sold. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Like, I'm very like proud of the fact that I'm like out there. I'm like on Target and stuff. I'm like, look at me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna plug this. If you need the book, uh, go to Betty's Pages. There you go. Yes, Betty's Pages. Like, I've been pointing everybody there. So that's oh. like the you know I want to support Nicole as much as I can. I love her. Love her place. And uh, so when you when you release. How long does it take till you become a bestseller? Oh, so I've had that on my manifestation list for years, like being a bestseller, like a New York Times bestseller. And I know there's a lot of politics that goes into the New York Times bestseller list, but that's just the the sales number I've had in mind. So you can hit it at any at any point, but your best bet is usually in the first week because all your pre-orders 
count yep. toward the sales of that first week. So, yeah. There you go. I say, and that'll be uh, so pre-order the hell out of this, yeah. so that way we we can get two copies, one with a gold ribbon on it that says number one bestseller, and then the yeah. original. Yeah. Yeah um so excited yeah it's like I've, I've been manifesting it and i have like i'm getting the feeling like i feel like it's gonna happen because the response to it has just been like so crazy so far it's been like people are really excited about it when they hear about it when they see it you know my agent got her like a box of copies and she said they were gone within the same day because everybody in the office wanted a copy good that's awesome um and, and you know you you bring up the difference between men and women for pay and things but you know we we talk about it right there's dave ramsey there's the money guys there's a lot of men with the money aspect and then you know when you try to list off the women that are involved in money i don't even remember her name she's pretty big but then you get the 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 shark tank lady or ladies yeah i guess barb and whatever lori lori yeah but Mm -hmm. you know really it's not it's not a common thing so like getting more women that are doing this will hopefully get people like my niece to start fucking doing money things yeah so, well, i mean we have christmas present right here right? i've already bought yeah. her all of her christmas presents i'm not buying her anymore we have i will buy girls her that. that we coached yeah that got turned on to jesse because we had her on the show yeah jessica loves her yeah and my daughter listens too yeah Aww. so i mean there's very few episodes these people listen to of us. They, yeah. They just. Hey. Well, I mean, they've listened to us so many times. They're right. just annoyed with us. Yeah. But they do like the Jesse De Silva episodes. Oh, that makes me, that makes my heart like so happy yeah. because Ma- I love talking to like young people, like it's because, you know, it's so cheesy, but like they are the future. So, mm-hmm. and they're, they are like sponges. They want to like soak up everything. Like when something resonates with them, they listen and it yeah. sticks with them forever. Mm-hmm. Um. So, and now do you do any youth events i mean i haven't specifically but i would love to like yeah. you know i would be happy to talk to young people so yeah that's i think where my passion is, is mm-hmm. and david as well um we like teaching the kids we do i say we love you know honestly all of our favorite episodes are pops and pennies yeah the interviews and things like this is great but we'd much rather just do like a 10 minute pops and penny because like we're just like so yeah because we hear back from those kids and they're like oh my god i have my three jars yep say um it's just so much better for us um you know but i i think i I wish you the best of luck with it i really do i think it's gonna i think it'll hit top seller um september 19th correct yep that's when it comes out like officially that's what i'm like you know, it's like I've been saying from the beginning, like I was saying for a long time, I'm like, it doesn't feel real. It won't feel real until I have a copy. And like, I have a copy now and it definitely feels realer, but I think it's going to be a whole different level of real when I like see it on a shelf in a store and Mm -hmm. like, I didn't put it there, you know, like it's been like they ordered it and put it on the shelf. That's going to be a a new experience for me. Which I'm super excited for like your social media when you go, because I feel like you're going to be a lot like me. Well, you'll go around to these places and just start taking selfies with your own book and be like, that's me. (laughs) What's up? Like, yes. Spotted here, spotted there. You know, I think that's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm going to hold you to that. And then then maybe you'll follow Bucks and Brews after that on your Facebook page. I do. I don't know why it's not showing up. So heartbroken. Um, We we should, you know, you're pretty, you're a pretty big deal. Just call Mark yourself and tell him to fix his shit. (laughs) Just say like, Zuck, what's up, bro? Uh, Fix your shit. Um, If only, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if you'd be a cool guy or not. I don't think him and I would get along. <laughs> so it's weird how that works. <laughs> um, so, all right. Now, the people you're you're dealing with, are you trying to do a lot of I, college college talks, right? Because, I mean, people, you know, I know you have a law background, but, like, are you just going to go do a lot more college things? Or I would love to. Like, again, like, it's, you know, breaking into, like, the college speakers circuit is its own thing. Um, really? But that's, like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, like, its own thing. They have, like, a conference every year. You have to have, like, a table and stuff. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's 
it's its own thing. So I've just kind of said, you know, I'm not going to like, I'm just going to let them come to me because sure. they will. It's only a matter of time. They'll <laughs> find me. Um, have you ever been to FinCon? No. Oh my God. I want to so bad though. Yeah. Have you guys been? Are you I going? have not, but it's been on my list and uh, I'm trying to convince my wife. I, you know, I was telling her, I was like, Oh, we're having the millennial money, which she goes, I want to be called that. And I was like, you actually have to <laughs> do something with money. And she goes, I make it and spend it. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't really right? count. Yeah. Touche. I don't know. Fight Jesse for it. And she's like, huh? I was like, no, like, I, I know your wife that, that, no yeah um and i love your wife love her to pieces no yeah not not with money no um you know she was bragging to me that she was all proud that she's putting money away and i was like i'm very proud of you i'm, I'm you're doing more than me i don't have a 401k that's for sure <laughs> you don't have a job <laughs> so i'm broken homeless um <laughs> but no i so college so there's circuits now what do you, I guess, what do you like to teach? Do you like to teach your whole business like in general? Like, Hey, do you, would you rather teach people how to get their dream job or would you rather teach them more on the financial side of things? See, I like love all of it. Like to me, you know, one of the biggest struggles I had in traditional employment is that I get bored so easily. Like if I'm in something for long enough and I love the space I'm in now because I get to, span a few different topics and I have fluidity to it. I like to feel that I don't have the same day twice. And so that's why I think I like to, you know, have a few irons in the fire as far as topics go and people whom I teach. So, I mean, like, it's hard to say, like I go through phases where like, I've definitely been more on like the dream job thing lately, just because I've had lots of people asking me for it. My audience has been all about that, but I love the entrepreneur stuff too. I love helping business owners because it's never the same problem. Like I, and I love a challenge like that. It feels like a puzzle to me. Like let's figure out what's not working and figure out what will work for you. That's like really fun. So I love working with business owners and companies because it's never the same. Whereas with job hunting, yes, it can be more formulaic, but that what's always fun for me in that space is seeing how people build relationships and like helping them, you know, kind of dispel this idea that networking is something where they got to like put on a stuffy suit and go to some stuffy events and collect business cards. And then they don't know what to do with the business cards. I like see like hearing their stories where they're like, Oh, and I went to this like, you know, fun thing and I met these people and they just so happened to know these other people and like hearing, hearing the momentum that builds from that and seeing how they like build these networks and these communities. That's always like so fun for me. So I don't have favorites. It's a long way of saying I don't have favorites. No. Um, and there's a reason I like so many different topics is because it all comes back to money mindset. It all comes back to that. Um, just come it's just kind of like different flavors of it yeah that's i i i do a lot of networking events and i mean david knows that i I don't show up in a stuffy suit and if it is a stuffy suit place i mean i'm already my wife's just not getting it my cousin doesn't listen to this but i don't even want to go to her wedding because they they're requiring they're not requiring but strongly required suggested slacks and a tie Okay, I am. I I wear slacks. I mean, to tell you how much we don't want to wear slacks, I wore fucking kilt this year to national bowling, right? Like, can't you wear a kilt to this or no? No, I asked my wife if I could. I was like, I'll wear my kilt and a freaking tie, but I think my aunt will escort me out. Um, But I'm sitting here just going, I don't know why. Like, I don't want to dress up anymore in my life. That's not who I am, right? Yeah, I don't like pants Um, either. Yeah, it's just. I've gotten to the, you know, and I have no problem putting on shoes, but it's sandal season still here in this yep. world. Uh, yeah. I know. I, I only get four months of it. Okay. I don't, I don't want shoe weather. <laughs> so. Sounds yeah. to me like you need a hot pink tiger print suit. I, I think you do. If they made them in my size, I would. Okay. 
but they don't. I mean, like, I got it from Eloquii, which is a plus size brand. So you can probably order a higher, like a bigger size and then have it tailored. I'm just saying. I, you know, I might look into this because, um, you know, I've tried, I've tried those like loud mouth things, but yeah, no, they don't go to my size. I'm, I'm a big dude, big dude. So, um, and I don't make enough money to have everything custom yet. So, you know, I yet. figure if I had that kind of money, I guess I'd probably have a personal trainer to lose some weight, but, um, <laughs> say, and then go to the normal size suit. But yeah, no, it's, it's getting to that point. Cause I love being loud. And cause I even told her, I was like, Hey, I told my wife, I'm going to go spend a shit ton of money. Cause I'm going to go get some like lime green pants. I'm going to go yes. get a fricket. I'm going to go get. You know, I have a, a lime uh, green blazer who, yeah, that I love. So a baby blue shirt with an orange tie, right? right? Like oh. that's who I am. So you, you talk about magic, and it's it's weird because like I'm a magician, right? So like, mm-hmm. and when I was fitting into my outfit, I, I had a white tux, I had white pants for a tuxedo, uh, orange vest. Uh, I had a different color tie like a lime green tie or a, a blue tie type thing. everything i i wore a lime or like a different colored shoe on each foot like it was clown mixed with still very classy of having a tuxedo on and it was great and i love that like that's who i yeah. am as a person right like but you know, i can't do this whole how did the lime green go over great <laughs> no i met with your wife for the wedding at, um, she's like, eh, if you want to, and I was like, I want but to. But you do yes. want to, right? Like, you know, give me like, I don't know. I want to go get my head put on a suit, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just there's me. Nope, sorry, they're slacks. <laughs> they're dress ones too. You should I'll- check like Etsy. I bet somebody would like create something yeah. for like you know more oh, an affordable rate. I'll get them pleated and everything, right? Because I have no problem. With, like, make it classy, make it stand out, yeah. right? Um, so, all right, we, we, so you're in Jacksonville now, is that? No, I'm now gathering? I'm in Gainesville. Gainesville, okay, sorry. Um, and what made you move? Well, my fiance got a job. He graduated with his PhD. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, and Sounds I Sounds like a in... loser. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Tallahassee. I'm like, I'm a gator. And I was living in Tallahassee for him to get his PhD for, you know, the past almost three years. So now it's his turn to be in enemy territory. So yeah, he got a job. And so, you know, he's going to be teaching at two different campuses and Gainesville's right in the middle between the two. So it works out perfectly. So now I'm back in my home turf. Um, And thankfully he loves it. He's admitted it's better than Tallahassee. So that's all that matters. Good, good for you guys. Um, yeah. And my wedding invite is where? Oh, will we haven't make, officially. I didn't make that list started either. Planning it, we haven't. Yeah. I know. Well, we've been engaged for almost like four years now. But Jeez, yeah. yeah, I know. But next year, we're saying next year we're finally going to do it. We're going to do a Halloween wedding. So. Oh, I'm nice. totally in. Um, yeah. I guess I have to fly down to Florida. Do I have to wear uh, slacks and a tie? Yes. Okay, I've said you don't have to. I've said like classy Halloween, not po- polyester Halloween, but you know you can wear whatever. It's I'm fine. Show up in a pimp suit. I mean, I got a <laughs> say, I got a costume. Yeah, say, uh, I've said, a- like we're looking at like maybe Savannah, maybe New Orleans, so that way it's like already kind of spooky vibes. Um, there you go. So we haven't so- started planning because he just started his job, and he's the one who's got to rein in my tackiness. So you yeah. know, gotta. Well, let me just put it out there. The good news is the, the most handsome person you're looking at on this thing right now happens to be ordained. Uh-huh. And so, uh, you know, I, I work for beer. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know. That is I'll, good info. Yeah. I say I'll be up there in my uh, my preacher Halloween costume, just making jokes the whole time. <laughs> say. But we went to a wedding where the both the grooms, like one of their moms, like their mom, um, dressed up like um Moira and Shits Creek when she yes. like married them. Yeah, she did the whole outfit with the big like bishop hat. It was amazing. It was so funny. I'm and jealous I didn't get invited them. to that right. one. Yeah. That one was last year. That was so fun. Yeah. Um 
Let's see. Anything else, David? I think we hit a lot today. Jesse, anything else that we've missed that you want to update us on in your life and what's going on? No, but I do have two pieces of advice I'm going to leave people with. Um, because some people struggle with the set, like discussing salaries with like friends and coworkers and stuff. So this is a tip I got from the interwebs a few years ago that has never failed me. And it's called the over under game. So if somebody is reticent to like give you their salary, you can say, well, do you make, can you tell me if you make over or under this number? So you'll be like 40,000 over or under. Okay. They'll be like over. 50,000 over or under and you keep going until you kind of have an idea of where they are. So that's like a nice way to like figure out what people are making in your workplace without being so blunt or like making them feel uncomfortable. And the other thing, the question where they ask about like, where do you see yourself in five years? You answer it honestly, right? You know, you can say like, oh, well, you know, I hope that I'm in a place where blah, 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 blah. But I always like to follow it up with the question of, what do you offer your employees to make sure that they are still here in five years? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Why not put it back on them? If they're going to put it on you, put it back on them. I ask that question every time. Cause they, you know, I'll get asked that question. Hey, where do you see yourself in five years? I see myself in a top leadership management position above where you are currently. What are you going to do to help me get there? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, well, you know, that's a really quick take on it okay great like you you don't know anybody that's that ambitious to get to that point like doesn't mean you have something there for me right i'm telling you where i see myself hold on and then and i've actually followed it up too with i don't know where do you where do you see me in five years right i've asked that and i'm like because i've told you where where do you see me well wherever you want to get to no that's that's not true because you haven't like i told you where i want to be i want to be a vice president of the company what do I have to do to get there? Right. Like, and, I and, love that. Oh, I yeah. love that. But I'm very blunt and forward, mm-hmm. which is why I don't get a lot of position things uh, because people are like, yeah, no, that's kind of full of shit. And I'm like, oh, like I, I'm, I'm holding you accountable. You got, I'm going to rephrase that for you. It's why you've dodged so many bullets. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a, yeah. So, you got to be authentic in those interactions. Otherwise, you wind up in a place where, you know, they don't like who you actually are, right? I think we talked about it on the episode with you uh, about uh, asking about money and time off and things like that. Because, you know, the person that was doing my pre-interview was like, maybe you shouldn't ask those questions. The fuck? Those are the only things I care about. Like, right. those are the questions. What does your benefits look like? What What does my time off look like? What is... I say, I'm here for a paycheck, okay? I'm trading you my hours for your money. Right, so. yeah. People forget that sometimes. But that's the other thing is, like, it's it's okay to, like, bounce. Like, if you mm-hmm. know in a job interview or a screening that you're like, ooh, this is not going to be aligned, you can say that. You can just say, you know, based on how this conversation's going, I can just tell that this is not the right position for me and I'm not going to thrive here, so... I, I want to thank you for your time and I'm going to see myself out basically. <laughs> yep. And it's not burning a bridge, right? Cause you never Cause got you don't want to go to that place anyway. Yeah. Like, so. yep. And, and you just, you know, I, people have to get the, I don't know, the guts to go say those mm-hmm. things and go do it. Right. Because really value your time. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, how many, how many interviews have you ever sat through where they're just asking you stupid questions and it's just like, are you serious right now? Like, right. I don't know why I'm answering this. <laughs> you know, um, those are some of the funnest interviews, honestly. Yeah. Cause by that point, I just don't have any fucks left to give. <laughs> so you just start setting <laughs> things up. So, yeah. I saw a meme the other day that was like, why do you want this job? And it was, and the answer was like, because y'all hiring. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what drew you to this company? The now hiring sign you put yeah, out. Okay. Right. Like, you you said pay for work i said i work for pay okay (laughs) i thought that's all we needed here yeah um i don't you know i want to touch base if you wouldn't mind i guess uh can we reiterate with a couple of these people what are some red flags to look for in a company oh okay my top one is anytime they say we're like a family we're like a family that's like and it's not always a red flag i'll say it's more of like a pink flag like you gotta like kind of do your due diligence because whenever i hear we're like a family what i hear is 
we have no respect for your boundaries and we'll say whatever the fuck we want to you. (laughs) Right? Like, that's what I hear when I hear, like, we're like a family. And, like, people will say things outside of that where it's like, you know, they'll maybe say, like, oh, you know, everybody gets along. We're all friendly here. You know, people hang out outside of work. But, like, for some reason, the phrase, we're like a family here, that always seems to be, like, a red flag for me. Um, If somebody pushes back, on like normal standard questions like you were saying about salary about vacation time things like that if there's pushback there that tells you that like they have some kind of problem with you advocating for yourself um you know i always tell people like never like when they're asking for salary like you never want to give the first number so even in job applications if it's requiring you to put in an expected salary always say put in a fake number you know so like one, 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 or something like that, where it's like obviously not a real number. And just instead go with the phrase, I'll accept any reasonable offer. But sometimes people push back about against that. They'll be like, that's so wonderful, great. But like, what is it really? And you'll be like, well, you know, what really matters to me is that I'm in the right place, doing the right kind of job, blah, 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 blah. And they'll be like, okay, so cute. Uh, What is your expected salary? And you can say, what's your budget for it? What's your range? What's the range for the position? And if they push back and say something like I've heard before, which is, well, that's doing it backwards. <laughs> then you got to run in the other direction because that just means they're trying to get you as cheaply as they can. Yeah. So I, those are like my top ones. Yeah. It's like when pe- when there's pushback on questions like that, you know, if they like, especially in like salary negotiation, if they're going to be like shitty about it, they're like that's how they're starting off the relationship and they're trying to impress you just imagine how much worse it's going to be when you want to raise yeah i remember my mcdonald's application uh it said uh requested salary and i, I put eighty two thousand dollars um <laughs> and they brought that up to me they're like you 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 put eighty two thousand, and i was like yep that's where i that's where i'd like to be why don't you tell me what you're looking to hire at and uh they're like well we start at you know eight dollars and 75 cents an hour and i was like okay like sounds great but you asked me where i want to be okay like that's that's where i want to be i'm here um, to dream big all right yep. like <laughs> and uh I, I walked out of an interview one time because i was getting into an argument um you know they asked hey do you have any questions and i said yes you know what's what's your starting salary here and the corporation oh we don't talk about that in the first interview and i said great sounds like there won't be another interview and i got up and walked walked out because i was like you're not going to sit here and tell me how much you're paying. You're wasting my time at this point. That's a right? fucking like, trap. Yeah. Give, give me. Yeah. <laughs> so they got, they're like, what? And like, I literally got up and I was like, yep, I guess there's not a second interview here. I was like, you're not getting me to come twice without telling me what I'm going to come work for. And uh, yeah. that was fun. <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm, the I'm mantra I have is asshole. like person to give the first number loses. So yeah. make it the, make it the company. It can't be you. Because yeah. they have manpower that you don't. So, yep. Well, and you know, I always ask for more because you can always go. You can always go down. You can't ever go back up, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll say like if somebody comes back to you with like a salary you actually love, because I've had a lot of people where they're like, "Holy shit!" They just gave me like like offered me double what I'm making now. Oh my god, it's so amazing. And like if you like the salary, I say just for practice, ask for 10k more. So if like you're going to give a number, always give 10K over what you feel comfortable asking for because you never know. So Mm -hmm. like I had someone do this where she had been making like 50 something a year and then she goes to like at like a smaller law firm, like small to mid-sized law firm. She ends up going to work for a big law and they come at her and they're like, how about 110? And she was like, oh my God, I was expecting a hundred. Like, this is insane. This is so much money. And I, and she remembered what I said. I said, at least ask for 10 K more. So she said, you know, I was really hoping to be more in the range of 120. They didn't even blink. They were like, okay, we'll make it 120. We'll have yep. you come on. Boom. And like, it was like, that was 10 K that was on the table that she would have had no idea was there if she hadn't asked. So even if it's a salary you love and you're tempted to take it, just for practice, ask for another 10K. You never know. And, and you can ask in a way of, you know, I was really hoping for, you know, yeah. this. Uh, and, and trust me, though, they have no problem coming back. Well, you know, hey, 110 is really where our max is. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll give yeah, you time this- to think about it. And honestly, at that point, if you're really excited about it, just say, you know, 
I you think can I can still I, say I, yes. I, I think yeah. I can do that. Let's start and see where it goes. And I and well, maybe we can renegotiate yep. in three to six months, right? When you see my work exactly. performance. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and then in three to six months, they just tell you to go piss off. But still, uh, I say no, it's you know, and then so it's again you you're not locked into the uh mm-hmm. there, nobody's ever gonna go yeah no we're not doing that bye unless they didn't want you in the first place yep. right yeah if somebody were to like revoke a job offer because you tried to negotiate the salary that tells you everything you need to know about her <laughs> it's like, just dodged a major bullet like yep. honestly so yep. yeah i always say like you know companies like that's part of the job that's no. part of the job of hiring somebody is negotiating the salary. That is a normal part of like business operations, yep. whether you're a nonprofit or what, like that's part of it. And so if they're going to act like that's like offensive for you to do, then that just tells you everything you need to know about the culture. Yeah. I mean, even at, even at Gentex, I, I, they're like, this is what we start everybody at. And I was like, nah, I'm going to be at like 10, 10, you know, or 11, 10. Well, no, we start everybody at 11. No, I, I want to be 10 cents higher, right? Just, no, we don't do that. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll take it. <laughs> but like, I knew I was going into the next level like two days later, which was going to be, right. you know, 1370 or whatever. But yeah, I literally was fighting for, <laughs> for a tooth and nail. I'm like, no, this is what I want to get hired in at. <laughs> so yeah, no one else is going to advocate for you. You have to advocate mm-hmm, for yourself. Yeah. So, no companies. I mean, if companies were handing out money for free, everybody'd work there. But like, right. no company's ever just going to go. Yeah, sure. Here, here, go. Like, have fun with it. So, right. Yeah. Every, everybody gets fifty million dollars. <laughs> so, um, no, I think those red flags are great. Um, you know, I I will go back to the one that you said originally. Right, we're like a family. One of the companies I applied for was like, yeah, we're we're like a family, and I was like, what do you mean? And they're like. Well, you know, we have company party, company picnics, stuff like that. And then it, it was like, well, the owner, his son is the vice president and his nephew's the head of the department over here. And I was like, all right, does anybody in the family work on the floor? Right. Like, is this a real, yeah. like you got, no, you guys are family. We're just working for this fucking family. <laughs> like that's what's going on here. But yeah, his, his wife's a secretary. Right. I'm like, yep. I see. Where mm-hmm. I'm the head of HR and I'm, you know, the niece. And I was like, yeah, okay. I see where this is going. We're having a meeting last week oh. before my boss goes on vacation. And she goes, hey, uh, anybody going to the summer celebration they're doing at, at all of our campuses? I went, hell no. <laughs> it's the first one to answer. And she's like, oh, <laughs> I'm not driving in to eat your shitty food and hang out with people I don't know or like. No, not doing it. I'll stay home. Thanks. Yeah. I, mandatory fun is like not the vibe. No. I, I always, <laughs> so when I worked at Gentex, they had a pumpkin carving contest. Oh God. Okay. Oh, that's different. Okay. Like well, I would sign up for that so fast. Well, so the problem was, is it was like a vote by your peers type thing. And my boss is, or at the time he was, he's an artist. I mean, he, he's done so many children's books. He's done some adult, like he's an artist. He's a real artist. Like fucking factual. Right. And then there's all these other people that took so much time to like do their pumpkin right and i walked in with this little gourd and just took a, a plastic knife from the from the drawer and just wrote gentex on it and walked around to everybody and made them vote for me so, so i went 100 bucks and like and I, it's funny because the people that this is bullshit bullshit and i was like see the idea is not how much effort you put into it and what you did it's literally can you get these people to side for you this is how this is how this company works it was like I and they they it was the, everybody was pissed right because you're like what the fuck like how do you get and I was like I just asked for their vote they said I don't give a shit because they didn't get into it I'm like yeah Nick got you Nick got you <laughs> so yeah that was uh that That's was my hilarious heart, right and I think yeah. I probably found the gourd on the side of the road on the way driving right, in, right? um but hey three hundred bucks I'll take it yeah no you gotta know your audience yeah that's exactly it I mean bosses didn't need money <laughs> so but you know he's got this elaborate huge like he's oh, got yeah. you know 20 hours on it and there's me in the morning with a plastic butter knife for six seconds just jig <laughs> <laughs> but oh all right i uh say everybody thank you so much for joining us uh shout out to perrin for some beers um i do have a parent no rules in my car that i'm gonna drink on the way home uh 
<laughs> Sorry, that said pause for laughter. No, I was like, um, say if if you're still listening, thank you. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, tell your family. We appreciate you joining us, David. What'd you have to drink? Uh, I had the forbidden fruit. That was the watermelon, yep. which you did not like. I had a juicy peach from Line and Kugels, and I had a juicy pear, oh, and then wow. uh, Pigeon Hills salted caramel porter. There you go. And Jesse, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, congrats on the book release when it happens uh, September 19th. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get it at Be- Betty's Pages. You can get it on Amazon. Anywhere books are sold. What did you have to drink? I had Swamp Head oh. Wild Night, which is their honey cream ale. There you go. Uh, again, congrats on all the success. We're looking forward to having you on again. Uh, and hopefully when you come here to Michigan for your book signing and, uh, there'll be at least two people in line yep. for the book. Yes. So, um, I bet we could probably get three, but I, I would say there's two of us for sure. At least two of us. <laughs> so, awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Take care. All right. Have a good night guys. All right. Thanks for joining as always people. And we will talk to you very soon. <laughs>in to box and brews you might hear something you can use like tips on your cash or tips on the suds you're gonna want to use the smarts of these stuff because they know the brews and they know the box and they know they can't help the stubborn fucks so listen up because shit's not funny and save yourself some beer, beer money bucks and brews bucks and bucks and brews bucks and brews